welcome back to my channel as you can tell from the title of this video i'm going to show you how to make my blackened salmon shrimp and grits with guer cheese and smoked mozzarella so this is beginner friendly this is like the most easiest one you can make if you just have like a dinner party or something or a gathering and you want to cook something to impress some people this will be the meal it has a few ingredients and a few seasonings but the technique to this is everything so I just want you to watch the video fully so you can understand exactly what I'm doing. The very first thing I want you to do is to prep a 8 or 10 ounce um, salmon filet and that's just by getting it washed and then going ahead and patting off all the rest of the water and then you're going to start to season it. So for the salmon I use freshly cracked black pepper. I think in every video I tell you guys to make sure you use freshly cracked. And then I went in with just some onion powder and some garlic powder. I also used some Tony's Creole seasoning and some Old Bay along with the dried herb that I chose was the parsley. So I am adding fresh parsley as a garnish but I did add the dried parsley to the actual salmon filet to rehydrate once it is in the pan cooking with the butter and the oil. If you choose to use other uh seasonings you can um but if you are someone that only likes salt and pepper on your salmon this is not the dish for you because this is like this has a lot of flavor in it um we're not making steak we're making salmon so for the seasonings i use about a half of tablespoon of each if you add more seasonings whichever ones you want to add to your liking you want to reduce the measurements of whatever seasonings that you are using so right here what you want to do is make sure that you flip it and you can send you to season the other side with the same seasonings. Yes, we are cooking this with the skin on. Whatever you do, do not take the skin off. We will take the skin off, but we will not take it off until after it is cooked. Cooking the salmon with the skin on releases all the good nutrients and everything that you do need. Um, you can eat the, the skin after uh, you get done cooking it, but for me, when it comes to the skin, it has to be like really, really crispy for me to eat it. Like I don't like chewy skin like at, at all I don't, I don't think i know anybody that like that but that's just my preference if you want to keep the skin on you can but for this one and this recipe i did take the skin off and i know you're like well you're seasoning the skin so what's the point it will seep through once you see the technique that i do once i actually start to cook the salmon so after you're done seasoning it you want to pat it in not rub it in and then you want to dust off each side and then pick up the seasonings with the other side just like i'm doing here this makes sure that everything is evenly distributed and every piece of the salmon has some seasoning on it. So after you get done seasoning the salmon, what you want to do is bring it back up to room temperature. You can do this before you season it or after. I like to do it after just so the seasonings can marinate in there a little bit. Now we're going to take some colossal shrimp. You can do colossal or you can do prawns. You're going to devein them and you're going to peel them, but you're going to keep the tails on. I'll have a full video soon showing you how to peel and devein fresh shrimp. If your shrimp is a little pink, that means it is pre-steamed and that's not what you want. You want to make sure that you do get raw shrimp. So what I'm doing now, I took six because they are pretty large. Again, make sure that you do keep the tails on and we are just going to season these with the exact same seasonings that we season the salmon with. So a quick tip for washing seafood is to make sure you wash it in cold water and to make sure you wash it in salt water. You want to wash it back into its element and then you're going to rinse it with cold water again and then um, cold water and lemon juice because the lemon juice brings the freshness back. After that, you're just going to lay them out and pat them dry and that's it. You just want to check and make sure that there's no more veins left because sometimes the veins do still stick in there. Another lesson when it comes to deveining shrimp, there's only one vein that you do need to take out and that is the back vein. That is what we call the sand vein in culinary terms and that is the shrimp's digestive tract. So everything that the shrimp has eaten is in that vein and you want to remove it. The bottom vein does cook off. There's no need to remove that. Um, it, it plays no part to the digestive system, so it will not kill you. So now um, you just see me adding a little bit of oil just to help the seasoning sticks to the shrimp. The salmon will be cooked in the oil, so this is why you did not watch me add oil to that one. So you just want to massage it in and make sure that all every piece of the shrimp has the seasoning on it. Now we're about to start cooking. So we're gonna take about two tablespoons of white truffle oil. We're gonna add it to a saute pan. So this pan is what I'm using. I'm using a saute pan. If you have a cast iron skillet and you wanna make blackened salmon, 
I suggest you use that. But the reason why I'm using the saute pan is because I know a lot of people do not know how to use a cast iron skillet and that is another video. So once the pan is hot, you wanna make sure you hear this sound and you just want to lay the salmon in skin side down. Depending on the thickness of your salmon, do keep in mind we are making blackened salmon, so this is going to cook for a little bit longer. So after the first four minutes, again, I like the skin to be crispy just so it's easier to pull off. You're going to flip it after four minutes. Once you flip it, you're just going to let it sit for about 30 seconds, and then you're going to go ahead to start to add the compound butter. There's a link in the description box that will show you exactly how to make compound butter. If you want to make mine, you can. If you don't, you can you know find another recipe to do that so I'm taking about three tablespoons of butter just because we're going to baste this salmon with the butter so after the butter is fully melted this step is very important for you to make sure that the butter is fully melted there's a lot of videos where people just put butter and then put whatever else they're cooking in the pan no we need it to melt we need it to melt all the way down so once the butter is fully melted what you're going to do is cook the other side for another three minutes Within this three minutes, we are going to do a technique called butter basting. The first thing you want to do is push the thickest part of the salmon down, making sure any of the oils and the butter release. Then you're going to take your pan and you are going to pull it towards you just like I'm doing here. You're going to create a pool. And from that pool, you are just going to distribute the butter and the oil all over the salmon. You will continue to do this for about 60 seconds. When you do this, it will continue to cook the salmon from the top to the bottom and the sides. Keep in mind that the butter and the oil is hot so it will continue to cook it. Please do not be discouraged by this part. It is really really easy to overcook or undercook salmon but if you do it my way I promise you you will not go wrong. So after three minutes what you're going to do is flip it and you want to make sure you have this nice crust just like this and you're going to do the exact same thing for 60 more seconds on the other side. You want to make sure that you are basting both sides. So a hint when you are basting if you're doing chicken, steak, or salmon or anything like that you do want to make sure that you are doing it quickly. Like you, when you baste it, you need to make sure that you're doing it very, very quickly and not slowly, slowly because you can overcook the whatever it is that you have in your pan. So after I get done basting the other side of the salmon, what I like to do is to press the thickest part down just to make sure the steam is released through the salmon. After that, what you're going to do is take it out. I know for a fact that it is not all the way done, but it is about 85% done. What you're going to do is allow this to rest. You're going to take a pot, a pan, whatever you want to do. I took this bowl and you're going to put the salmon into the pan. Then you're going to take that oil and that butter and pour it over. And then you're going to immediately take some aluminum foil and cover it. When you cover it, it will continue to cook, but it will not be overcooked. This prevents your salmon from drying out and it helps all of the juices stay in. And again, it just finished cooking it. Um, the next thing after that, what you want to do is take that same pan and you want to cook the shrimp. Do not rinse the pan out. You want to use the same seasonings, the same butter. You want to use, you want to leave the butter and oil a little bit in there just to help the shrimp cook. These shrimp are pretty big, so they're going to take a total of three minutes to cook. On the first side, you're going to sit them still for about one minute. And in the next clip right here, I'm going to show you why you want to sit them still. So you want like a bit of a char because we did do black and salmon. So you want it to kind of match. So right here, this is what you want it to look like. Is it focused? There you go. This is what you want it to look like. After you get all of these flipped, this is the last two minutes that these will cook. So you want to keep the tail on, but you want to remove the shell because the tail holds a lot of flavor and it helps it season it. So what you want to do after you flip them is you want to go ahead and you want to add lemon juice. You can add freshly squeezed lemon juice or you can add um, just whatever lemon juice that you have. I did add one tablespoon more of the compound butter and I got that melted down. After the butter is fully melted is when you want to go ahead and add the lemon juice um, if you have small lemons i would use the whole lemon if you have the really large lemons then i would use half of the lemon or if you just like lemon you know citrus you can use however much you want to use so when you are squeezing the lemon you do want to make sure that you do not have any seeds drop in 
please make sure you look for that because if you if you bite a lemon um seed it can crack your tooth and i don't think you want anybody eating your food to do that um so just make sure you take the seasonings out you can use a little strainer you can use whatever you want to use but just make sure that whatever if you see a seed take it out so what we are doing is creating a light sauce for the salmon once we put everything together i'll show you guys that in a second but you just want to toss the shrimp make sure everything is nice and coated and these are pretty much done turn them off sit them to the side because now we're going to have to make the grits so the first thing you want to do with the grits is make sure that you shred down some smoked mozzarella so the smoked mozzarella um, might be hard to find so if you can't find the smoked mozzarella you can just use um the regular one but right here, you just see me going ahead and um, shredding that down. We are using two different types of cheeses, and I'll show the next one once we start to cook the actual grits. So right here, you see me just putting the uh, mozzarella on the side in the bowl so we can go ahead and start making the grits. So for the grits, I'm making four servings. So I'm, I'm taking four cups of water to one cup of grits, and this is very important. When you pour the, the grits in the boiling water, whisk it. If you want clumps, don't whisk it. If you do not want clumps, follow this technique and make sure that you are continuously whisking those grits at the first stage. You wanna make sure that there is no clumps while they're going in. If you do not whisk it, you will have clumps. So right here, you see that after about two minutes, you see that there's no clumps. Um, what you wanna do is back up because if, if you get popped by grits, it hurts. It really hurts. So just step back and um, turn the pot down. Now you're going to season the grits. This might trigger a lot of people. So if you don't want to watch this, if you don't like the seasonings, get off. The time now is to get off. For this meal, I season the grits. Yes, I season the grits with black pepper, Old Bay, a little bit of cayenne pepper, garlic powder and a little bit of um dried parsley and i also use a little bit of uh onion powder again this is seasoned grits and they're a little bit spicy but the next step is probably what's going to trigger people because i added one fourth cup of sugar you just want to add the sugar in the sugar will balance out the saltiness it will not be really sweet grits and stuff like that because i know a lot of people are like i don't like sugar in my grits and some people only like the salt and pepper uh i don't like salt in my grits at all like i feel like it just completely overpowers it and all the other seasonings that i did use had salt in it so it was no need for me to add it and there's also no need for me to boil the grits and chicken broth i see a lot of people do that especially down the south i think that's what you guys grew up on but here i don't i'm not about to boil some uh, grits and chicken broth because it will make it salty so these are not instant grits these are real grits so it is going to take about 10 to 15 minutes for these to cook the next thing you're going to do after you get the seasonings and everything in there is you're going to add about two handfuls of the smoked mozzarella cheese so you want to allow the cheese to melt you want to switch switch to a wooden spoon and you want to just start trying to fold it in just like I'm doing now. As you can see how loose the grits is, they are still not done. Again, it's, it's going to take about, I would say 10 to 20 minutes, um, depending on what kind of grits that you have. You can use instant if you want, but I don't suggest that you use instant. Now we're going to take this cheese, this Swiss and this Gouer cheese that I got from um, Trader Joe's. Gouer cheese is hard to find, um, so if you can't find it, I will go right to Trader Joe's and get this i'm using about a cup of this you do not want to add a lot of cheese to your grits if you like a lot of cheese you can do that but you, you i don't suggest you do it um and you just want to make sure that you're folding it in one by one to allow the cheese to melt all the way down at this point the grits the temperature should be between medium and low and then as you can see how they look here, they're supposed to look just like this and you'll know that they are done. They should be thick. If you want to add a little bit more water, you can if you like them looser. But this is the one, how I like to do mine. So if you follow my technique, it'll look just like this. So you're basically done cooking. So now we can just put everything together. So we're just going to get some garnishes. I'm going to take a little bit of this fresh parsley and I cut a lemon up into some wedges. So now we're just going to take your favorite bowl, whichever bowl that you um, prefer. I do suggest you do a bowl because you have grits. Like, it's just only common sense to do a bowl. 
um, and you're going to start with a bed. So usually the bed is going to be the grits. I think it was like three spoonfuls and then I just leveled it out. And so after I got the grits into the bowl, the next thing I did was take the salmon filet and I just lay that on top. So after you lay the salmon on top, you're going to take your shrimp and you're going to line them up. You can plate this however you want to plate it, but this was just like, every time my plate is just freestyle. So this is, I'm just explaining to you what I did. I put the shrimps around the um, the salmon and whatever you do, do not throw away the liquid that the shrimps are sitting in because that is the light sauce that we created with the butter and the lemon juice. So after you get the shrimps lined on the side, I did three on one side and three on the other side because they were large, you're going to mix up the sauce and you're going to pour it right over the salmon, just the salmon, not the shrimp because it's made for the salmon you're just going to pour it over let it run down that's how it's supposed to be and then you're going to take a lemon wedge sit that right in there and then you're just going to take some of that fresh parsley and just sprinkle it on top just do exactly what i'm doing right here so all i'm doing is just basically like making it look pretty or whatever and presentable but um if you got to this point you just made my blackened salmon shrimp and grits with Gruyere cheese and smoked mozzarella cheese. So let me know how y'all like this recipe and if it was easy for you. And I will see you in my next video.